Alright guys, welcome to your 10th video, and in this video, we are going to be building the XML response. Now remember, this is the response that the server sends back to the client. So basically, your user chatting on your computer, and you're going to ask the server for any new messages, and once it you know queries the database and gets all those messages, it's going to format it in this XML response and send it back to you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to store everything in a variable called a response and the first thing we want to do is just you know do our proper formatting so that's this question mark xml and this is where i got to be careful to type everything version equals 1.0 and this is make, make some space here this is basically what you have at the beginning of everything Encoding equals UTF-8, UTF-8, boom roasted, and stand alone equals yes, because I am standing alone in my room right now. I don't have any friends, so that's why you need that. And let me make sure that this is like the part I don't want to mess up. Version 1.0, encoding UTF-8, stand alone equals yes, and of course you need a semicolon at the end. Now this of course is the very beginning but we have to send more information so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the same variable couldn't even find the never mind and we're going to add a bunch of information onto it and by the end the variable is going to be an entire XML file so this is the beginning and the first thing we want to add is that parent element So basically everything is going to go in between this response tag. So let's go ahead and end that. Now the very first thing we want to add to this XML file, actually what we can do is, I'll show you guys how I'm going to format this. Now basically we're going to be adding a bunch of stuff into this XML file or variable as it is right now. So it's going to start with a response tag and it's going to end with a response tag response bag what the hell or <laughs> what the heck is I should more properly say in this educational tutorial and at the end what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return this whole whole not whore wow I just have dirty crap on my mind today I guess response variable and in between is where we put all the information And if you're wondering alright what's the information the information is basically Whenever we ask the database to return all the messages, it, it just doesn't return, you know, 10 different, you know, pieces of information. Each message has a bunch of information along with it. For example, the message ID, the username, the message itself, the color, the time. So what we need to do is we need to build a loop that's going to loop through all those messages real quick and return each of those as a separate element in between this main parent response tag. So let's go ahead and give us some space. And actually, before we build the loop, there's a cool little thing that I want to show you guys, and that is this. If you copy this and paste it right here, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add something, this arrow, and we're going to be building a quick function that says is database should I put, yeah, I'll just put database cleared. And we're going to be passing in the ID. Now what this is going to do, and of course we didn't build this function yet, but it's basically going to give you a clear flag. And what a clear f flag is, I'll just write it in plain text right now, is it's going to be tags that looks like look like this, and it's either going to have the value true or false. It's going to be true if the database was cleared, which basically means do you have basically um where are the messages that you want to start from? Or if the database is clear, that means that all the messages were wiped out there. That's a very simple explanation. So that's the first thing we want to tell it. And now what we can do is we want to build a loop saying all of the messages that we want loop through them and add them to the XML file. So the first thing we want to do before we start looping through messages is we want to check is there any messages to loop through. So how do we do that? Well we just make a very simple if statement and for the condition 
what we want to check is result and remember we already have this result variable right here which basically queried the database and got any new messages so this is our result now the result can either be zero if there are no new messages or a number like you know one a hundred a thousand if we have or fifty I guess if we have new messages so let's go ahead and check for how many rows it returned using the built-in num rows so basically if this is zero then it's going to be false don't even worry about looping through the messages because you don't have any if it's anything other than zero from one to you know fifty then it's going to loop through those messages and that's what we're going to do right now so how do we loop through the messages so let me go back so this basically only runs if you have new messages so let's go ahead and loop through them so while is the best way that we can loop through these messages now the condition for this while loop is 